Dungeons and Dragons is a game that has gained a certain reputation for itself, especially among the Christian and religious communities. Now, I'll just get this out there, I am a Christian, and I do play Dungeons and Dragons. This is going to be mainly addressed at the people that might have still a bad vision of what Dungeons and Dragons is, and hopefully clear up some misnomers or misconceptions about, you know, certain aspects of the game. This video is going to be split up mostly into four separate pieces. Firstly, it's going to be telling you what Dungeons and Dragons even is, why it's got its bad name, addressing the concerns that people have nowadays, and then finally my opinion of why I chose to play Dungeons and Dragons and why I think you should probably give it a chance. Okay, firstly, what is it? Dungeons and Dragons, aka D&D, is a high fantasy RPG, or role-playing game, which is focused mainly on a cooperative gameplay style. If some of that didn't make sense, don't worry, I'll break it down for you. The main thing is that the entire game can take place in your mind. You'll see. You usually have to start off with about two to seven players, depending on, you know, what you like to do, with each player having a character and a designated character sheet. Basically, these sheets give you an outline on what your character's strengths and weaknesses are and your certain abilities that you might have. Your character can be one of many different races, i.e. dwarves, elves, humans, and many, many more, as well as they have usually one of the many classes, like fighter, rogue, wizard, paladin. The players then sit around with their character sheets and they have a separate person who is known as the Dungeon Master, or the DM. The DM's job is to portray a certain sandbox-like world with different characters, places, and quests to go around in and play in, basically. It is then the player's job to describe how they interact with said world and how they go about doing whatever it is that they want to do. For example, it might go something like this if, let's say, I was a Dungeon Master. I might say something like, you walk into a tavern and the smell of, you know, the freshly cooked mutton hits your nose and you see about 15 to 20 people uh, all sitting around, uh, different races, mostly dwarves actually, given the fact that you live near a dwarven mine in the mountains. Uh, it is a dark room, only candlelit. It is sunset outside, so it's only a candlelit room with no windows. And so on and so forth is how I would describe it. So then the player's job would be to interact. Maybe they would say things like, my character looks for a quest board to see if there's any sort of things that are needing to be done. Or another player goes and says they're gonna ask a waitress if any suspicious characters have been in through the town recently and, you know, what maybe they can do about it. And that back and forth interaction is what happens for the next two to five, eight hours. It can be a long game, but it can be full of fun and interesting interaction. There's also combat, which is a little more organized, but it's basically kind of the same concept except each person has a different turn and a limited amount of actions they can do within that turn. The only really physical thing you might need is some dice! I'm gonna have to clean all those up. One of the most important kind of dice are the 20 sided ones, which allow you to check whether or not your character can do something that might be difficult for them. So let's say a character wants to climb a ladder. Well, they would just be able to do that normally. But if they wanted to climb up the side of a building, I, as the dungeon master, would ask them to roll a d20. And depending on how high the roll is, is how successful they are in climbing said building. And on their character sheet, there might be certain bonuses to how strong their character is, which would help them in climbing the building. And I know that at first kind of sounds like a lot and it's really confusing, but it comes down to really a simple, imaginative interaction between the players and the dungeon master and a couple of dice rolls. And that's all there is to it. It's just pretty much playing pretend with a little bit of organization to make sure everybody stays in check. Okay, so that alone might have changed some of y'all's minds because I know when I was a kid growing up, I didn't even understand or know at all what Dungeons and Dragons was, and neither did anyone else around me. We were all just told to stay away from it because it was evil and bad. 
Funny enough, back in the sixth grade, one of my best friends and I created our own kind of version of D&D without even realizing it was superheroes we made up and we would role play and do that kind of thing with each other. And when I would, you know, kind of tell people, even adults about it, they would be like, oh, that's, that's really creative. That's really, you know, cool of you, you know, play, you know, using your imagination, even though you're a little older. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Those were the same people that were telling us to not play Dungeons and Dragons. And it wasn't until years later that I realized what we were doing was similar to what Dungeons and Dragons is. And on that note, there are plenty of other RPG games out there that are similar to Dungeons and Dragons. Some are high fantasy, some are sci-fi, some are in the real world, some are superheroes. There's just so many out there. So if Dungeons and Dragons isn't your style, there's something else out there that probably is and you can try them out and do them and there's plenty of stuff online that's completely free that you could use, so there's just so much. It's great. So maybe keep that in mind. Now, if a game like this seems so harmless, where'd all the uproar originally come from? Well, that would date all the way back to the 80s, where Dungeons and Dragons was in its early days. Obviously, back then, being nerdy and geeky wasn't really cool yet, so a game coming out like that it was already not having much going for it when that just is kind of looked down on by society. But then all the Christian people came around and kind of made it a lot worse. Long story short, a lot of people were claiming that Dungeons and Dragons was a gateway to cultist activities and Satanism. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous if you ask me, but most people were just misinformed of what was going on. There was one kind of prominent figure in particular named Patricia Pulling who tried to sue the creators of Dungeons and Dragons after her son unfortunately committed suicide and she blamed Dungeons and Dragons for it. Even though in actuality there was no basis for Dungeons and Dragons actually having anything to do with it. I guess another thing that wasn't necessarily super popular in the 80s was mental health awareness, but what can you do? It was an angry mother that was uh, wanted something to blame and I get it, but honestly that entire situation has put a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. But ultimately, the court dismissed her case because there, again, was absolutely no evidence for it. There were other people that did similar things and tried to get groups together and tried to get a band and whatever, and they would, you know, do a bunch of stuff, but it really didn't ever amount to anything other than people just believing what they were saying. All these people claiming that there were demons in the game and all this horrible cultist activities were going to affect and destroy our children and honestly it just snowballed from there. And I know maybe some of the people watching this were alive during that time and maybe weren't necessarily involved but would hear those kind of things and probably believe them if your parents were telling you that. I mean that's just kind of how things go. But that then just leads me on into the next thing which is people's concern of today. Which haven't changed too much. I did say a second ago that people were believing that there are demons and devils in the game, and you know what? They were absolutely right. Except not at all. You see, these demons look like this. Which, you could easily just say that that's an alien from another planet, let alone a demonic figure. And from what I believe, it's not really anything accurate to a biblical standpoint of what a demon would look like when a fallen angel fell from heaven, they probably still look pretty good. Not these grotesque, disgusting looking monsters. Honestly, these things and real demonic creatures are so far from one another that I personally don't see it as an issue. They just happen to share the same name. Now that is another concern that people have, that people don't like taking demons and stuff lightly, which again brings me back to the thought of they're so different that I don't even see them as the same thing. I don't take real demons lightly. Those are crazy real things that I believe and I don't want to go anywhere near them. That's why I don't play with Ouija boards because that is actually trying to summon a real demonic spirit. But the demons in the game are just imaginary and fake and we control them as the dungeon master or players. They're not, they're just a figment of imagination. They're boogeymen, so I don't really see them as anything close to one another. But if that is still an issue for you, you don't have to play with them in your game. That's the great thing. You can add or take away whatever you want. If that's the problem with Dungeons and Dragons, don't play with the demons. It's completely possible. If you just talk to the DM and tell them I'm not comfortable with playing around with those kind of things, 
they'll probably comply. There are plenty of other monsters. There's this big old book full of monsters that can, you can use from and there'd be plenty of other things. No, no devils or whatever. Okay, another concern is that there's magic in the game, which I understand is a big deal in a lot of Christian families, but I, again, think is a little ridiculous personally. But if you haven't heard, let me just give you a quick rundown of what I believe, is that when you look at the word magic and witchcraft in the Bible, it is the Greek word pharmacia, which we get the word pharmacy, it's drugs. Old Wiccans and witches of those days would use hallucinogens and different drugs like that to make people see and believe things. So when you're just waving around a magic wand and going blur, that's, that's nothing even similar to what they were doing back in those days. So that again is, I see it as completely different. If there were drugs in Dungeons and Dragons, which some people do have certain drugs that can do certain things, I wouldn't even play with them in my game. Again, you can take away or add whatever you want. And I mean, there's, you know, magic in Narnia and Lord of the Rings, which were written by Christian authors. So what, what, what's the, where's the, you know, where's the line? I get it. It's the same argument that people have for something like Harry Potter or other magic things. I personally just don't think that's a, you know, a standpoint I would want to have. And again, though it may be difficult, you can play the game without magic. It's a little difficult, I will say. But if you just play with a bunch of physical attacking characters, then you can completely avoid magic. And there are, of course, again, other RPGs that don't have any magic at all. So there's that. I know I'm talking for a lot, but I'm almost done. Let's just keep going. Okay, another concern that people have as they hear these stories is like, my friend was sucked into a cult and all this stuff and blah, 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 and their lives were destroyed. Okay, I've never actually met anyone who that's actually happened to or they knew someone personally that that really happened to completely. There are no real cases that were reported and followed through that that actually happened to a large extent. To me, it sounds like people saying, you know, I took, my friend took Tylenol and now they're doing heroin. Like it's, there's a disconnect there. There are a few steps in between. And if someone did fall into some sort of occult thing, that's on them. You can't say any game forced them to make the decisions they did. It's probably something to do with their own head and they were looking for a way to get there. And they wanted that themselves. And that is similar to another thing that people are concerned about is they hear about someone getting consumed by just the game and it takes over their lives and all they're doing is playing the game and blah 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 so they kind of think, oh this is bad and that kind of almost looks a little culty with how much people can get into this game. But again, this happens less often than most people think, but it does happen. I understand that it can be a very addictive game. You can easily get sucked into playing and want to be playing it all the time, but it's the same thing with video games, sports, TV, or anything else. This is just a little, maybe almost closer to home because you're actually playing out the characters. Some people see it as an escape and they just want to live that life instead of their real life. And in a small dose, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I understand it can be a little weird if you cross that line. But again, the game does not force you to play it. Those are your choices, and if that's something you struggle with, then maybe don't play, or limit how many hours a week you can play, or, you know, whatever it is, you know, that you need to do for it to be healthy experience. And if you don't struggle with that kind of stuff, then give it a chance. Maybe you'll enjoy the game. Game game, the game. I keep saying that over and over because it is just a game. And it's honestly some of the most fun I've ever had playing a game. I'll be real. It gives me and my friends fun bonding time with one another and it gives me a reason to talk to them from across the ocean. It's honestly probably something that's one of my favorite things to do in my spare time and I'm not ashamed of that. So why should you give it a chance? Do you remember that time when you were a kid and a stick could be a sword or, you know, a rock was a grenade if you were an army man or whatever it was, but that imagination just ran wild and you could play all day with a couple friends and enjoy that experience. This game can capture that and allow you to relive those kind of feelings that us as adults are almost not allowed to feel anymore. It builds friendships. It 
creates a creative outlet. It helps you grow your improv skills, which improv skills are very important in a work community. Just saying. And it creates jokes and inside stories and different things that you and your friends can tell for weeks, months, and years down the line and you'll remember those times. And it's actually been shown by science that when you access your memories of dreams or stories you've read or things that you've looked up and watched and those, when you access those memories, it's the same part of your brain as accessing your real life memories of experiences and stuff and this stuff can you know really help someone that's in need of friendship and experiences with their friends. Maybe someone who can't necessarily get out of bed all the time or leave the house too often. This can be an outlet to allow them to have adventure in their own way. And as a Christian, it is a great form of fellowship, which I know is something that all of you little Christian people it's what you want to hear. And again, it honestly just gives me a reason to have fun and interact with people that I love that are thousands of miles across an ocean. So maybe, just maybe, give D&D another chance if you haven't. Find another group that plays it and maybe ask if you could sit in on a session. Or, crazy enough, has to play. Just try it once, just one time, and I guarantee you'll be surprised at the experience you can have if you just allow yourself to have a little bit of fun. And again, there are plenty of games out there. If D&D is not your style, then go play some, you know, there's a Star Wars RPG out there that I've been meaning to play, which seems really fun, where you can play as a stormtrooper and different stuff like that. I mean, doesn't that sound awesome? <laughs> so the next time you may see a bunch of Christian people meeting together to play Dungeons and Dragons, instead of praying that they leave these evil habits, maybe ask if you can join. And as always, stay creative, love each other, and I hope you have a good day.